Hello everyone, welcome back to Real Solar System Interstellar with Exoplanets in Kerbal Space Program 1.12. I have gotten a new video card, so now I want to tackle that one asteroid that auto-captured into orbit around Earth in this particular save. Uh, we'll set aside the full catalog of KSB Interstellar engines for now, but I've converted this save into a science save. It was a sandbox save before, but it, of course it'll be more fun if it's a science save. Career save would be useless because of the pricing of all the parts in KSB Interstellar is not going to be particularly sensible. So a science save is probably the best way to go. And I've got community tech tree for that. And I've also got my own RP2000. So if I wanted to turn it into a career mode, I could. But one thing RP2000 does is sets, uh, sets our clock to the year 2000 instead of 1950. At least that'll be slightly more realistic. I've given myself uh, I think it was 15,500 tech points. RP2000 has this stuff over here, but most of this is just the main community tech tree. And I've repositioned some parts, especially my own parts, into better locations. And this is how much we unlocked with 15,500 science points. And so, of course, we have the more advanced stuff that we haven't got. But this will help us structure our activities in this particular save. And so one important thing that we needed was if we're going to go to an asteroid, we probably want to have the Convertitron, the drills, and of course the claw. And so we do have those unlocked. So we'll go over there in order to drill for ore. And the Convertitron is still drilling for ore, but it can convert to some of the real fuels, including liquid hydrogen, liquid methane, and such like that. Now, of course, we have other drills like this universal drill that could give us universal things. Uh, anyway, intake liquid is a uh, good question what that ends up being, but we'll hold off on that for now. Uh, as far as the actual engines are concerned, we have my own Timberwind engines. Uh, we sort of saw the RSS Interstellar equivalent of that as well. Um, the RSS Interstellar candle engine is available here. I also unlocked this technology and that gives us I, don't, I still don't think I get the RSS, inter, not the yeah, the KSB Interstellar uh, Timberwind, but I still have my Timberwind there. But also a liquid core reactor engine is here. So if we want to go there, that is also available. So probably what we're going to be drilling for is hydrogen. So let me go to the VAB and cook something up to head out to that asteroid. Okay, so just as a test, I think this is what we're going to send. We've got the claw, we've got the drills. The drills are actually attached to this part. Uh, they're not attached to the ISRU unit because I don't think you can attach stuff to the ISRU unit. And this is a hydrogen tank. This is one of my NTP tanks. It's just a six meter one. And we've got really big solar panels because we'll use solar power to power the drills and the converter and everything. And they should have about 53 kilowatts worth of output in theory uh, in theory and then we have radiators I don't know how big a radiator we need but we'll see and then well let's see uh, we've got it says it's blue <laughs> it's blue uh, we've got 79 megawatts of heat dissipation and 112 maybe we should make it a little bit bigger and those are from the three nuclear reactors down here, I think. I don't think these are bimodal. In other words, I don't think they provide power. That's why we have these, but maybe they do. As far as what uh, uh, what engines we have available or what parts we have available in KSB Interstellar, it is all the parts we have available right now in KSB Interstellar. Let me just resize those so that they can handle the 112. Let, that's pretty good. Okay. So what we have is candle, well, let's just go through. RCS block, ArcJet, lots of ArcJet, because ArcJets are actually things that exist in real life right now. Uh, aluminum, uh, oh, sorry, al aluminum apparently, as it's spelled there. Photon sail, all sorts of photon sails. Dipole drive, uh, doesn't even tell me what that does there. Uh, there's some photo photon reflection here. And there's a direct cycle nuclear turbojet, heat pump drill, capacitors. Uh, I don't know if we want capacitors on this yet, but that's probably more for the receivers and power transmitter stuff. ISRU aluminum locks fabricator, uh, ISRU converter, so that's for 
other things, but we would have to input thorium and liquid fluoride for this, so that's that's all very complicated. And um, so thermal receivers and I uh, sorry, your refrigerator that could be helpful if we were getting gas from somewhere. Uh, we do have liquid hydrogen. Uh, converting liquid hydrogen to solid hydrogen seems, <laughs> um, yeah, it's not that simple. But anyway, let's set that aside for now. Large deployable universal mining auger, and then the engine that we're actually using on here, liquid core reactor engine. I could have used my Timberwind, but I decided to go with these since we are trying to use KSB interstellar parts. And really, out of all these, this is the only one that seems like a likely use uh, likely to be used in this case. I, I don't know, uh, there ought to be other engines around. I don't know where they are, uh, even at this stage. I thought I had that methane and oxygen engine, but it's not listed here even though I clicked on the case B in a stellar tab. At least we have the candle engine. Uh, anyway, uh, liquid metal cooled reactor. If we wanted to put a reactor on here, we could. Liquid metal cooled though is special. Um, radiator, nuclear ramjet, universal drill, and then omnidirectional RCS thruster for hydrazine, but that's way OP. Really, is it really hydrazine and 2000 seconds of ISP? I think not, but it weighs a ton. So what the heck is this thing? <laughs> this, this is a confusing little one. Let's just set that aside for now. We're For RCS, we are just using right now um, MMHM on three. As far as its balance is concerned though, maybe I want some additional ones. I think uh, that we only have these at this end. And that's because this tank was based on a NASA proposal and they really only had those. So yeah, that's why I put those only, but I do have my own RCS blocks here that we can add and they will make things more helpful. They're already MMHM on 3. Okay, so we're going to launch this and we'll just go conventional for now. I'm going to use my Kasei launcher, which should be able to hurl this far enough. I mean, this has its own delta V after all. It's got 8,000 meters per second here. So we're not expecting this. We're just trying to see how big this asteroid is and how much ore it has and stuff like that. So, or even if we can get ore out of it and then... Oh, I should have actually put ore tanks, shouldn't I have? get ore out of it and convert it to what we need. All right, plenty of ore capacity, probably too much ore capacity. I'll lock it. I don't think it'll fill them up, but just in case I'll lock those. All right, and then I'm going to put it on the Kasei rocket and we'll see how that goes. Okay, so those not familiar with the Kasei rocket, it is my own rocket design. The core is Hydrolox on both stages. The engine is the ED9 engine on both stages, except the one on the upper stage has a vacuum nozzle. And those engines get 4,000 kilonewtons at, uh, at altitude, not at sea level. Uh, there are five of them on the first stage and one of them on the second stage. So it's actually pretty good at lifting things to low Earth orbit, probably a little bit less optimized for high orbits. Uh, it's got four Sagita boosters. These boosters have methane and oxygen in. They have five engines apiece. Each engine gives 1,000 kilonewtons. And so that's what we've got there. I'm at my launch site at Tampico, my custom launch site with my custom terrain and with the city in the background there and we are going to need to line up with our asteroid. Which way around is the asteroid going anyway? 144. Okay, well let's see if that's right. Okay, that throttle's not working. Throttle up and ignition. And launch. While well, it's going up. Is it going retrograde? I think it's going retrograde. <laughs> okay, fine. We'll go retrograde too then. Change of change of plans. This is a mighty rocket and it has great power. Unfortunately, we're probably going to drop the boosters on Boca Chica. But that's fine. 
They like methane and oxygen anyway. Well, unfortunately, it went way, way steep. But again, our payload has 8,000 meters per second of delta V, so I sort of don't care. It's fine. Okay, booster set. Ooh, I thought they had little separatron thingies on them. We'll have to check on that. So much for going into the sunrise, though. Okay, first stage separation, and... I don't know why those separatrons aren't doing anything. Fairing sep... Yeah, for some reason, separatrons aren't doing separatron thingies. That's very peculiar. Okay, well, we might as well get the radiators out sooner rather than later. The reactors are on. Well, the sun's setting again. <laughs> because we are going in the wrong direction for that. No, we might as well correct that inclination in a hurry. We're right at the descending node. Okay, a bit lopsided because of the very steep initial launch, but relative inclination is down to 0.65 degrees. And we've, we've got about 1,800 left in this stage, and then we'll need to use the nuclear engines. So, uh, well, let's get on with it. We're going this way. Uh, okay, we probably... I guess we'll match the periapsis first. It's not great. Uh, to do that. Let's see. At least the thing is already captured. We can take our time. Yeah, I guess we should match periapses. Yep, the reactors on the nukes definitely do not produce electric charge. Uh, the iterations on that thing's orbit are very, um, well, they're not great. Okay, so now we have to be very careful not to actually go on escape. It's so nice having Maneuver Node Editor. But even then, this is very touchy. Yep, even at a hundredth of a meter per second, the separation is wide. Anyway, we do have to also correct inclination. But basically, we're boosting up to there, which is still not quite all the way. That requires 3,100, and that's going to take a bit. Okay, well, it's sort of indecisive about the start burn time there. As you can see, it flicks between various numbers. It's not just counting down. It's, yeah, it's, it's not sure about it. It'll take us a few seconds to separate, and it's probably not even counting the nuclear engine stage properly anyway. I might not have been counting this stage properly. Did we use more than we were supposed to? No, it doesn't look like it. Huh. I swear it didn't tell us we had that much delta V. But, okay. Let's see. Alright, RCS is to go. And our little nuclear engines. They are fairly little. About 60 kilonewtons there each. Let's see, 63 kilonewtons in climbing. 1600 seconds of ISP though with these liquid core nu uh, reactor engines. Liquid core reactor engines. That's the southern tip of South America right there, isn't it? And that's Antarctica. We're in a very interesting place around the globe. Well, our radiators are red, but, you know, not the most unpleasant color that they could be. They can get uh, hotter than that for sure. Part temperature only 636 Kelvin. Heat sink temperature rising, but uh, 1100 out of 2200. 
We are gaining waste heat though, but that's sort of expected. Somewhat inefficient though the burn might be, uh, it is nice doing a burn at this particular altitude above the earth. It's a good view. Waste heat going down when we turn off the engines, that's good. Well, 100, okay, <laughs> I lost the 100 there. Uh, okay, let's make a, whoa, I did zoom out quite a lot to show the other stars, but now we will make a correction, an inclination correction so we can get closer than 100 kilometers, hopefully. It's still too touchy. <laughs> Okay. Okay, I'll look at that closest approach distance changing there. Oh, well, that's not too bad. Okay, off, off. Okay, 36. Considering the way it's constantly changing, I think we'll take 36. All right, coming around. Looks like we'll encounter it in daylight. That's good. Okay, maybe at this note we can fine-tune it before we actually hit it. That's showing 34 kilometers, though. Hmm. Maybe I should just use RCS free. All right, well, that gets us within render range. It has us tumbling a little bit, but that's okay for now. We do have hydrogen boil off, but not a critical amount. Oh, we're looking at that encounter okay i thought we were looking at this one but yeah i guess that closest approach is for that one okay there's the asteroid it's just a class a it's the smallest class but it's the smallest class in real solar system so i'm hoping it's fairly big still it might not be though it might be tiny and not even worth grappling onto. Uh, engine disabled, Re radioactive emissions are not allowed inside homeworld's atmosphere. We're not in the homeworld's atmosphere. Hold on, hold on, hold on. Um, uh, what? What the? Okay. Let me just save that. Okay. Um, okay. Uh, why, why do you mean radioactive emissions not allowed inside the homeworld's atmosphere? Anyway, uh, back to the tracking station and come back and then maybe I'll reload the save. We are definitely not in the homeworld's atmosphere. Okay, well, it's making a lot of noise now. Oh, it's still disabled. Um, is there a safety mechanism thing that can... Okay, how about, how about in settings? Is there like a difficulty setting for KSP Interstellar that lets me use it? No? It's not persistent thrusting. I've got persistent thrust in here right now. Speculative. Sci-fi. Come on. Um, okay, this, there it is. No! Okay, let me try and load. It still says that. No, it looks pretty small though. Okay, well just for our purposes for now, because obviously the game is cheating against me, I'm going to counter cheat and go infinite propellant. But uh, we're not in a good situation right now. We'll have to re-rendezvous with it. But at least we can use the RCS to do that. I claim that the game was cheating against me. Well, we're, we're gonna have to figure this thing out, because I don't know when it's gonna happen. Maybe it's just a one-off thing where we're in this weird orbit, very eccentric orbit, and it's confused, but still, this is nowhere near inside the homeworld atmosphere. <laughs> so, hmm. How did it come to that conclusion is the question. Oh, now it now it like now it let let them. Okay, well, just when I didn't need them anymore. <laughs> well, we'll see whether they still ignite when we get close. I'll turn off infinite propellant now. 
No, that's not what I wanted. Oh, it suddenly appears when we enter render range. It's very shocking, actually. Okay, our engines still work. What happened to distant object enhancement? I guess it doesn't work for the asteroids? I don't know. Okay, so... Control from the advanced grabbing unit. And I guess we'll have to get closer first. It doesn't seem that big, but we're still 1.8 kilometers away. When you're more than 200 meters away, it doesn't seem to understand exactly where the target is. Oh, that might be too fast. That might be too fast. Oh, it was too fast. Or it might not work at all, I don't know, but probably too fast. Please claw. It, it doesn't seem to be clawing. Are RSS asteroids claw impervious? You're armed, right? Well, that's, that's as close as... I mean, that's as soft as I can get it. Arm. Control from here. Target center of mass. How about that? This is problematic. Uh, can we get its mass? No, this is just the asteroid mission that uh, we have to actually attach to it. Thought we could attach to these things before. Right? It's not that much of an angle. This is a little bit of an angle. Here. Okay, that, that right there is pretty perpendicular. Nope. Okay, folks, I need your help. We're right here. What am I doing wrong? We've got RCS for now. I'm gonna save it right here. Why? <laughs> oh, why not? Why not, Claw? Why not? And maybe you guys have an idea why not. Why Why is this not working? Why can I not claw it? It says locked. But I think that means it's locked into armed position. Or maybe there's something else wrong with it. So, yeah. Maybe I've got something wrong. Maybe there's something I'm missing here. I don't know. So... Uh, let's leave it here for now. We have rendezvoused with an asteroid, but we really need to find out its properties and drill into it and see if we can get ore and turn it into liquid hydrogen. And this is how close we are. So with that, thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, please do press like. If you have any comments or suggestions, please leave them in the comment section below. And I'll see you next time.